Well, we are very excited to be joined by the headline act at Griver the Moo this year, the lovely Toby and Lorenzo from the Temper Trap. Guys, welcome. Thank you for having us. And it's very cool to have you here in regional Australia, in Maitland, your first Groove in the Moo, I understand. Yeah, yeah, we've never done one of these before, but it's cool. We don't really get the chance to come out to regional Australia much, so I'm pretty our excited. previous attempts have been washed out by torrential rain. Yeah. Oh. So this, yeah, I think we're going to be okay tonight, though. Yeah. But you have played one of the um, Triple J shows were they um, regional shows yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's what he's talking about we, we we tried to we went all the way out there torrential the rain dolby. there was like a, a foot and a half of rain like so they had to shut the whole thing down um and just before we went on so that was really disappointing uh, one night stand yeah right yeah, i didn't yeah. realize that Wash out. it was like a one night stand really disappointing yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. wet and sloppy and not very oh, satisfying enough, enough, enough. <laughs> to have you guys here I mean I, you have had the most incredible last couple of years I, I mean supporting Coldplay and then of course the news came out only recently um, you're supporting another rather large band yeah they're you know they're they're, again? <laughs> the aging wheels <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah we're becoming a professional support band yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but tell me about being asked to support the Rolling Stones I think it's their 50th anniversary tour that must have just been the most surreal happy time for you guys yeah, it still hasn't sunk in, actually. Yeah, I kind of thought that someone was, you know, playing a practical joke. Because I think it was around April Fool's Day, actually, when oh, we got the right. news. So I was like, yeah, I'm still thinking it's a practical joke. So I don't know <laughs> if it's actually going to happen or not. Now, is, are there questions you would like to ask the Rolling Stones? How did you stay alive all these years? You're probably <laughs> up there. Uh, can I, I have your dealer's phone number, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ronnie, how do you do it? Yeah. 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 Keith, um, just let me your black book for the evening, would you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, you guys are uh, based in, in London still, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we've been there now for four years. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been good. London's been very, very, very kind to us. And, um, yeah, it's good. It's just nice to be somewhere. When you grow up somewhere for such a long time, it's nice yeah. to kind of experience a different culture. And yeah. yeah. And how is that kind of uh, impacting your music and kind of, you know, I think this is the last kind of leg of the tour, if you like, to sort of support the current album. Is there new stuff coming out pretty soon? I know you've been in Byron recently doing some bits and pieces. Um, yeah, no, we went to Byron. Uh, we did like four or five songs over there, which went really well. There's a great kind of house there, um, the Corona La Casa house. So we're uh, loving being there and hopefully get to go back soon. But when we get back to London, we've kind of been building a studio space. So hopefully by sort of mid-June, that'll be all done. Um, and then we can kind of just, yeah, lock ourselves in there for the rest of the year and, and hopefully have, have an album by the time Christmas rolls around. Fantastic. Now there's a song on your most recent album, your self-titled album, about the London riots. What was your experience of the riots? Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a really strange kind of time to be in London and our rehearsal studio th there where we were on that day was kind of just down the street from one of the kind of East London hotspots where it all kicked off. Um, and Dougie's house even closer, like literally sort of 20 metres off that main road where they're kind of lighting cars on fire and all that stuff. So it was just, I mean, especially being Australian where, you know, you don't really necessarily have those kind of experiences and to be right in the heart of it um, and seeing the kind of tension and fear, feeling that in the, in the local population. Um, yeah, it was a very uh, kind of visceral experience, left a big kind of imprint on us. And did you feel endangered at the time? You don't, you don't feel endangered, I mean, but you, you, it's just that proximity of having stuff like that happen right next to you when you've, you've never come across that before. It's, yeah, I mean, there was no like immediate threat, but you sort of still feel like, you know, the chance. It's, it's a strange thing to kind of look out your apartment window and see smoke on the horizon and helicopters kind of flying past and every police car in the entire city is driving down your street and stuff. It's kind of like a war zone. Everything was boarded up, wow. you know, and the only things that were open were like pubs. So you just go and hang out at the pub and get pissed whilst everything was happening. Yeah, you, get, on, you get in before they put the boards up. Watch be happening out in the street. It'd be like really weird. Yeah, but you know, just just like the old days at the uh, the football. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And tell me about being based in London. Why is that important for you guys to be over there? Um, it means that we get to see our partners a lot more. Yeah. Um, because obviously if we were here, you know, the travelling that is involved to come back to Australia for two days off in between tours or whatnot, it just doesn't make sense. So 
Um, that was part of the reason why we originally moved over because we knew that we were going to be doing a fair amount of touring over there. Um, and it's just, it's a little bit more central, like Australia is awesome and it's really good to come out here but in terms, like when you're spending so much time overseas, yeah. like Tame Impala, you know, at the moment, you know, they come back and then they're kind of here for two days and then they have to fly back to Europe or to America and it, it just, for us it kind of, it seemed to make more sense to go over there and be yeah. ba base ourselves there for a little while. Yeah. And do you think you earn more respect from Australian audiences by being a bit more scarce? Yeah, I think so. I mean. There, there did seem to be a bit of a jump, you know, Sweet Disposition came out before we moved but then six months later when it was kind of started doing well in the UK, it kind of got an extra spike back here as well. So I think there's always been a bit, I mean I'm sure bands like Tame Impala um, as well are kind of seeing this, like when you go over and kind of get that recognition overseas, it definitely filters back through the kind of Australian music community as well. Yeah, I think so, for sure. So it must be a lot of fun then for you guys to come back and kind of be a part of a festival like Groove in the Moo and be able to catch up with, you know, bands like Tame and stuff who I presume you haven't really seen very much? Yeah, like the Juggernauts, you know, they're kind of like um, <laughs> a band that we kind of grew up with at roughly the same time. Toby's in one of their videos, like a really, oh, really? Juggernauts video. Fun fact for you um, there. You know, yeah. we used to live around, we used to go to the same parties and yeah, you know, it's cool. It's, it's just nice to kind of have that camaraderie with, with the other bands that are here and um, you know, fortunately enough, we've made friends with lots of different bands, but it, it's, it's special coming home and playing with Australian bands. So, any London or UK bands we should know about that we probably haven't heard of yet? Uh, there's a band called Splash, which is half Australian actually, and they're half English, and they're kind of making some waves at the moment. Splash are making waves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <that's> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a, a UK hip hop artist I really like called Ghost Poet, um, who's just put out his second album. That one's definitely worth a look. Yeah. And what about Australian bands? I mean, it's, I don't know whether it just, it's me or whether it seems like we're all, Aussies are doing pretty well overseas, you know, really sort of punching above our weight. You know, look at you guys and at Tame Impala and what do you think it is about the Oz music industry right now? It's so yeah. hot right now. <laughs> it's just so hot. Um, yeah. Earth, I, so hot right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I think it's just, there's just a freedom here. You, you know, you're not really, in England, and it's great, and obviously there's so much music, but it's very cutthroat. Right. Like, NME is very vicious. All the press and everything over there can love you one minute and change. Whereas here, everyone's a little bit more relaxed, yeah. and you can kind of escape from it all. And I think that's really important because it kind of allows you to kind of become individual and yeah, it gives and, you time and to kind of develop your sound whereas there you've played your third gig and already sort of you know yeah, enemy or like reviewing yeah. it and all that sort of stuff and here it's like you play for three four years before anyone even takes a second look at you so you just get that chance to like hone your live show write some better songs than the i mean if Finally, we, we, we hooked up with our, an old, old guitarist and he had these recordings, like the first kind of six songs we ever wrote. And we were listening to them today and I was just thinking, man, if anyone had ever heard these, <laughs> these are the first six songs that, uh, that a label had heard, we never would have gone anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I bet the same could be said for the Rolling Stones or for you two. You know, everyone's got to start somewhere though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but as I said, it's just, and the, and the quality, I mean, you know, obviously, Wally, you know, Gautier, yeah. Cut Copy, um, Tame Impala, Flume, you know, he's, he hasn't even gone overseas yet and it's <laughs> going to go crazy, you know. Um, and yeah, obviously the Rubens as well, you know, yeah. that's starting to kick off in America and, wow. and you know, all, all those types of things. It's just, you know, good quality stuff comes out of here, so you can't deny it. When the songs are good, the songs are good. Tell us about the uh, Temper Trap live show now. You know, what can fans expect? It's got to be pretty sort of fine-tuned and, and, and perfect by now, surely. Oh, I mean, we probably would like it to be, but <laughs> in, invariably uh, there's little gremlins and all sorts of things. As you kind of get a bit more technically minded and we've kind of gone down that path with kind of running sequences and having all this extra stuff to kind of fill out the yeah. sound, you kind of run into a, a few little things that you probably <laughs> wouldn't like to. Yeah. We'd be like, oh man, sometimes I wish we were just the two guitars and <laughs> bass and drums, rock band kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got lots of extra lights and all that kind of stuff now and it just kind of adds to that kind of 
the visual side of the show, which I think is. We were trying to get really pyro, important. but they wouldn't let us have it. How yeah. come Ramstein's yeah. allowed to have it? I don't know, but does, do you see Ramstein on the bill here? No, no that's no, true. I'm no. um, oh, sorry, no, we were Ruben. Excited. I thought you meant in general. We were like, oh, pyro, <laughs> yeah. We were on pyro <laughs> let's, let's websites, yeah. kind of like picking out all this stuff that we wanted. Yeah, and then like, they've no, all got really good names, bushfire, all these kind of like yeah. strange yeah. cannons and all yeah. this kind of stuff. But yeah. we're on a dirt um, track. There's no bush to catch fire here. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. We'll just have Maybe to let we'll just get some petrol and a couple of lighters. <laughs> DIY stuff. DIY yeah. pyro. Yeah. <laughs> so other than supporting the Stones, which is going to be incredible and so exciting, what's coming up next for you guys? Um, well, we're going after we do the Groove and the Move. We're going to Asia um, and we're doing like Jakarta festival and we're going to Manila for the first time, wow. which is going to be pretty crazy. And then we go back to the UK and start right, and then we're going to Iceland to do a festival. So we've never been there either. Um, and then doing some other festivals in the UK and then bunker down. Fantastic. So, yeah. Cool. A new record out early next year? Let's well, say, we hope so, or but Christmas who knows? Time, we don't or? know. Yeah, <laughs> early, early next year seems, seems realistic. Yeah. And uh, one question we have for everybody. Yes. Your pre-gig ritual. Do you have one and what is it? Yeah, uh, we huddle. have a huddle. We have a huddle beforehand and we just kind of pat each other on the back and go, just, you know, let's have a good show and all that type of jazz. I'm sure you've done it before. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. Joseph and does some weird stretching <laughs> that we pay him out for. And he always likes to do push-ups before he goes yeah. out. Oh. So we have a pre-show giggle at Joseph and then we get together. <laughs> yeah. In the Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, we cannot wait to see your show tonight. Guys, congratulations on all your amazing success and best of luck for the future. It's been Thank great you. speaking with you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.